I'm going to show you how I used 3ds Max to create a 3D rendered turntable of our product from Tome of Summoning, the folded reference card. Now, here in a fresh instance of 3ds Max, we're going to go into our perspective mode and we're going to start by importing the 3D card itself. Now, go into import, go into merge, and pick the Dryad card geo. This is specifically the geometry and not the Dryad card scene where we had had the lights and the camera set up because that will come in with the entire scene itself. Now, when the dialog box opens up, you can select all, which is really just the one Dryad card asset. So we're gonna drop that in. And we're gonna think about what we're going to do with this card. So when we think about the 3D animated turntable, we're thinking of something like this, which is a 3D animated turntable that we made for Tomo Summoning's latest Kickstarter project. Now, a turntable like this is a very effective way to give a little more action and a little more engagement out of your 3D renders. Though still 3D renders are useful in their own, as you can see in this graphic that we made here. They're good for still graphics as well, but a little bit of animation can really bring some life to a product. We're going to make it roughly about three seconds long. We're going to try to make it loop around. We're simply just doing a 360 degree turn, so making a loop is gonna be pretty easy for that. When we're thinking about a 30 second-ish video, we're going to think in animation terms and frames. We're going to roughly start with about 30 frames per second, and uh, three seconds of that would be about 90 frames. So why don't we set up our timeline? Now, to set up the timeline, we're gonna to go to time configuration down in the bottom right. We're going to set a custom frames per second and we're gonna set that to 30. We're also going to change the animation time segment, which the start time is going to be zero and the end time is going to be 90. So that's gonna give us a length of about 90 frames or technically the frame count is 91, but we're going to account for that single frame later. So with that, we set okay. And now we have the timeline that all of our animation is going to exist in. So let's set that down to zero and let's, let's go into keyframing. Now, keyframing is a crucial aspect of animation. Keyframes are essentially the points in time that a 3D model or a character or anything that is moving in animation is going from one frame to another, which going in between these two keyframes. And the computer is essentially building the motion in between the other keyframes in between. Um, from there, we're going to select our card and we're going to go down into the bottom right hand corner. We're going to see the toggle set key mode. This essentially activates our keyframing mode. And from there, we can start setting down some keyframes for this card. Now, we're going to start by looking at it straight on like this. We're going to set keys, which is this big button down here, or the hotkey K. Going to set some keys here. Now these keys are going to essentially set the key of all the transformable dimensions, which that's position, rotation, even scale. But you can go into filters and you can see what attributes or transformations of the object being animated, what's being keyed. So you can take a look here, position, rotation, scale, and don't worry about the IK parameters, but these are the big three. And technically for our purposes, we're only gonna be animating in rotation, but we'll keep these on for now. Now, what we do here, we're going to go to the end of our time segment. We're going to go into rotate and make sure that our angle snap is on so we can rotate this easily. We're gonna rotate this 360 degrees. So it does a full rotation. And then we're going to set key. So now we have the keys set between and we can go one frame at a time. So you can see when we go to the start of the frame, it looks exactly as the end of the animation sequence. And now once we scrub forward, we can see the animation. And when we press play, 
we can actually see the animation running in real time or in the frames per second that we've set up. 30 frames per second. Great. Now, let's turn the toggle set key mode off because we're going because we're done setting keys for now. We'll turn back on when we have more keys to make. So, here we have an interesting situation when we are playing this animation. As you can see, it does this weird slow start and then slow back down. This is because of, of a particular thing called a tangent for, from our keyframes. It's gradually starting it up and then gradually starting it back down rather than straight linear tr translation rotation of this object. And we can take a look at why that is by going into our graph editor. So let's set back down to zero. Let's open, or the curve editor is what it's called. Now here in the curve editor, we can see particular properties of this object and the keyframes that make it, make, make it up. So here when we look down in here, we can see position. These are the keyframes of the position, which nothing changes because we didn't animate. We didn't move the position in between the keyframes. So X, Y, and Z positions should all be the same. Rotation X, technically we did not rotate the X axis. We didn't rotate the Y axis either. We rotated the Z axis. So when we open our curve editor, the X rotation, there's no change. The Y rotation, there's no change. And it's the Z rotation that will have all that change. Now, this is exactly what we were talking about. There's a slow, gradual slope of this change in between the keyframes. And we want to turn those linear. So what we do is we're going to just select both keys. We're going to go up to this toolbar over here, which is how we change the nature of the tangents of our key uh, keyframes. And we're going to press the button set tangents to linear. And you can see that the tangents that are that our rotation is linear, has linear keyframes in between. Now let's see how that affects our animation. Now let's deselect and let's play again. Now we can see we don't have that slow acceleration up and then deceleration down. It's a very smooth animation, just a perfect loop going round and round in circles. So now that we've set this animated loop up, how about we move on to creating a camera to see what the animation looks like from behind the lens. Now let's once again go into our cameras. We're going to build another physical camera. We are going to zero the x-axis so it's perfectly aligned to the zeroed out geometry. We're going to go grab that target, zero that out as well. We're going to put this, align this to the center of the geometry. And then we're going to take this back a little bit and let's set up our camera panel. We'll go pick this frame over here, this uh, view box over here, and we're going to set it up camera, the physical camera. We're going to take it off of wireframe and turn it on to default shading. And from there, we're going to press shift F to pull up the frame boxes so that we get an idea of how things look in the camera's resolution and aspect ratio. Let's maximize this and let's, let's take a look. All right, it's a perfect loop. Let's look at how we did it previously. Now, I want these cards to change. So I'm going to set this up in a way that the loop will actually start right where the card turns to the side. So how about we go back into 3ds Max and Rather than change the animation of the card itself, I'm just going to take the camera and I'm going to put it off to this side. This time we're going to zero out the Y axis. There, now it's perfectly aligned. We're going to zoom it out a little bit. Let's scrub this animation a little bit. So this way the loop starts right when the card is perfectly parallel to the camera itself. Just a little setup trick 
so that if we do change the card, we can we can put that card change and start it again, start those frames here, and it'll be a whole separate card. Now, what's next is we're going to think about how this animation is going to be viewed. Now, a very consistent rotation speed like this is very nice, but we're going to enhance it a little bit by spending more time on the animation of the animation on the actual cards itself so our viewers can get a better look. Um, and we're going to spend less time on the on the shallower ends of this turn uh, so that we can spend more time looking at the face forward angles. So how are we going to do that? We're going to slow down the card when it's in a shallow angle and we're going to extend the time of the perpendicular angles. So how do we do that? So we set keyframes and here we are going to set a keyframe at where this point is at its perfect parallel. We're going to go back into toggle set key mode and we're going to set those keyframes. We're going to we're going to pick what angles we want to have maximum viewage. So I'm going to say the fifth at the 15 frame mark going to take that. I'm going to take another keyframe here at the 30 frame mark. I want to extend the time in between these two so that we can spend more time looking at the front of the card and less time looking at the edge of the card. So I'm going to keep moving from 30 to 45. It aligns there. We're going to then go to the 60. That's 15 frames later. I'm going to set the key there. And we're going to go to 75 and set that key there. Now that we have those keyframes set up, let's go into our curve editor and take a look at them. So pretty standard. We've just evenly spread out some keyframes. Now, which keyframes do we want to adjust? We want to adjust. Let's see if we can see. We want to shorten the distance in between or the time, the frames in between these two so that we can extend the frames in between here. How are we going to do that? We're going to select the keyframes that are here and we're just concerned about the Z rotation. So why don't we just select Z rotation and we can save ourselves the visual clutter of the other, of the other attributes. So we're going to take this one and we are going to move it to the side about five frames. We're going to move it closer to this one so we can shorten that length over here. The same thing is true with this next frame. We're going to take this and we're going to move it over five frames. Wonderful. Now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take this, we're going to move it five frames this way. And you can do it either way. You can do it in the frame, the, the curve editor by moving these keys around. But you might find it easier by manipulating them directly in this timeline. And you'll do the same with this one. You're going to move it five frames away. Now, we did say we wanted the linear previously, but for this, because we want a very gradual, almost imperceptible speed up and slow down of time, we're going to keep these in this curved tangent. So now that that's set, let's turn set keyframe mode off and let's take a look at this. So it's a subtle difference, but it it shows, it's, it's showing us a little more time with the faces of the card, which are the important parts of the card. And then quickly rotating past the boring parts of the card, which is the parallel side of the card. But this is how you manipulate the keyframes in your animation. And if you really wanted to whip that turn around, you could do the same thing by grabbing that. And let's, let's nudge it by two keyframes that way two keyframes that way and the same thing on the other side two keyframe two frames that way and
two frames that way. So let's see how that looks now. So now we have a little more time looking at the important aspects of the card.